One of these ladies works for Tom Poston, and he doesn't know it. <laughs> what is your name, please? My name is Mary Prince. What is your name, please? My name is Mary Prince. What is your name, please? My name is Mary Prince. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Mary Prince and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Helene Curtis, makers of fine beauty products, creators of suave hairdressing and conditioner, and America's number one hairspray, Helene Curtis Spray Net. Now may I introduce our panel. First, Mr. Tom Poston, then Miss Kitty Carlisle, then Mr. Ralph Bellamy, and finally, Miss Polly Bergen. <laughs> Kitty, good luck with your television fashion show on Sunday. Oh, thank you. This is the dress I'm wearing. Oh, boy. Uh, yes. Could I say something, please? Yes. I, I would very much, on behalf of the panel, and I'm sure the audience, when they know, congratulate you on your 25th year in broadcasting. Oh. 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 Thank you. Nobody can deny. For a word like that, I'll have a 26, a 27, a 28, a 29, and I'll have them all fast the same night. Thank you very much. You kind of surprised me with that one. Would you please open your envelopes now and take out your affidavit cards, and let's read this first affidavit. I, Mary Prince, along with my partner, Flo Gaffney, own and operate a very special telephone answering service in New York City. The list of our subscribers reads like a who's who in show business, including Tom Poston, who, incidentally, I have never met. One of our chores each morning has been to phone Polly Bergen's house to wake her husband in time for work. <laughs> our service is called The Bells. Two of our clients, Betty Comden and Adolf Green, wrote a smash hit Broadway musical based upon our operation. The show was then made into a successful motion picture. Its title, Bells Are Ringing, signed Mary Prince. And so, panel, with a startled look on Tom's face, we have three ladies all claiming to be Mary Prince, head of a unique telephone answering service. And incidentally, in this questioning, no personal telephone numbers may be asked for. No. Let's start this questioning with Tom Poston, please. Huh? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, m m m m Mary Prince, number three, <laughs> may I please hear your normal answering of, uh, voice? My normal answering voice. The bells, good evening. Bells. Number two, could you possibly... Could let me hear... Number two. Hey, hello. How do you answer the, the phone when it, when it... The bells, good evening. Number one, could I hear your voice, please? The bells, good evening. Would you say, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, Mr. Poston's residence? Say, this is Mr. Number, Poston's number residence. One. Which one? Number, number one, one, please. Hello. This is Mr. Poston's residence. This is Mr. Poston's residence. Gosh, I can't tell from that. <laughs> Uh, uh, number, number three, whatever I pay you, it's too much. <laughs> Gosh. Kitty Carlisle, please. Why is it too much? I can't guess, sir. I can't oh. <laughs> well, now, how would Tom ever hear you say this is Mr. Poston's residence? Does he call you number one? And do you say this he, is Mr. Poston's? We Post don't say this is Mr. Poston's residence. You see, you got off on the wrong foot completely, Tom. Who was the male star number two and the bells are ringing? In the play or the movie? In the movie. Uh, Dean Martin. Number three, who was the uh, male star in the play? Sidney Chaplin. Number one, can you tell me who wrote the music? Uh, Jules Stein. Number two, when uh, you answer the telephone for all of your clients, who has the most extraordinary messages of all? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of people. <laughs> Tom Poston or... Um... Ralph Bellamy. <laughs> <laughs> Number one, what is your phone number, the, the uh, phone's phone number, the company's uh, phone number? I'll give you the uh, exchange. That's what I mean. Plaza. Plaza. 
Well, you can't give the full number. Number two, can you? Number three, can you? <laughs> it's we... an unlisted number. Unlisted number. Um, number three, how many customers have you? 150, roughly. Um, number one, uh, what it's are... Pretty high-class clientele. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> number one, what are most calls for? Most messages you take? Most messages are leaving messages. Well, I mean, are they professional? Or... Oh. <coughs> Polly. Number two, does my husband get many calls when I'm out of town? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting all the personal questions. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd check. Uh, number three, um, uh, what time do we usually leave a call at our house? Eight o'clock. Number one, what else do we generally ask when you call us in the morning to wake up? Well, you are not a subscriber of ours. Oh, I'm not. <laughs> well, I'm with my... Hu I live with my husband. <laughs> no. In the same house, and he... That's the, the bell. <laughs> That's <laughs> not the bell. Uh, the bells are ringing, as you just heard. So it's time, if you will, please, to vote. Mark your ballots without consultation. Leave no messages and simply select number one, number two... Or number three. Team of challenges, of course, will receive $250 for every incorrect telephone message. Everyone marked? Yep. All uh, right, Tom, for whom did you vote? Well, let me say first, Bud, that I really feel honored to be among the uh, clients of the Bells. It's really a tremendously efficient, wonderful, friendly organization. I'll get that in before I say that I think our Mary Prince was number three, and it's only a guess from just the sound of her voice alone. They're really wonderful people. Okay, Kitty, which one do you think is the real one? I voted for number three. Uh, number two hesitated a little bit on the male star, and uh, number three sounded as though she had the more professional voice of the others. Ralph, which one do you like this again. time? Would you, would, just once more, repeat it, Kitty. <laughs> number three. Uh, I'm not too sure. I think it might be number two, but number three is my choice. Holly? Well, I voted for number three, but I didn't figure anybody else would. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, don't, I really don't know who it is. I, I, we, none of us really ask any information that would uh, sort of expose the real Mary Prince, so it, it's a guess. All right. And they are our guests, so let's see what we do with our minds made up and our votes all in. We come to our own special moment of truth, as we do each week, when we determine which one of our challengers is the real one. In this case, the one who operates a rather unique telephone answering service. So will the real Mary Prince please stand up? <laughs> Thank you very much, Mary. Well, you didn't fool the panel. It was 100% down the line that time. Uh, number one, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? Yes, my name is Carol Fenner, and I'm an art director for Flexicraft Industries in the Bronx. Thank you. <laughs> and number two, your real name and what you really do, please. My name is Frances Peter, and I work for the Scribner Bookstore on Fifth Avenue. Thank you. <laughs> Well, we check up on our scoring, we find there were one, two, three, four all correct votes, therefore no incorrect votes. But from Aline Curtis, by way of consolation, $150, plus, of course, a fine gift package of all of their wonderful uh, beauty products to each of you. Thank you very much for being with us, and uh, keep those bells ringing. Good night and good luck to you. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Larry Eliason. What is your name, please? My name is Larry Eliason. What is your name, please? My name is Larry Eliason. Again, panel, will you kindly follow along with your card copies of this affidavit? I, Larry Eliason, have been an archer since I was nine years old. I also hunt varmints with bow and arrow. Varmints include predatory games such as fox, wolves, coyotes, bobcats, mountain lions, and others. To lure these animals within range, hunters often use a horn-like wooden device called a varmint call, which, when blown, brings the animals out to investigate. At Grayling, Michigan, in competition with 22 other top callers, 
I recently won the Varmint Calling Championship of the United States. Signed, Larry Eliason. The panel, you heard these gentlemen all claim to be Larry Eliason, champion varmint caller. We'll start this round of questioning with Polly Bergen. Polly? Uh, thank you, bud. Uh, number one, if I were to yell, um, Sue, what would I be calling for? A girl. A who? <laughs> a girl. A girl. A girl. A girl. <laughs> number two, do you know who I would be calling? Probably be calling hogs. Number three? Hogs. Number one, hogs. Hogs. Uh, that's pig in New York language. Uh, Maybe you meant girl pig. Yeah. Number three, uh, there is a, a city in Michigan very famous for a lot of cereal factories. Do you know the name of that city? Battle Creek. Uh, number two, um, can mountain lions be found in, uh, in quantity in Michigan? No, ma'am. No? Uh, Tom Poston. Uh, thank you, bud. Uh, let me see. Number uh, two, I'll ask number two. How is a bird arrow different from a, a big game arrow? A, a bird arrow usually has uh, spiral feathers on it so it won't get lost in the trees. It won't carry as far. Uh, how do you keep, number two, how do you keep a bird arrow from, penet from, from going all the way through the bird? You, you have a blunter point on the bird arrow. See, on a, on a, like on a predator or a varmint, you use a, a broad bladed arrow that's very sharp and so it, it'll kill it that way but a bird the main thing you want to knock him out of the tree thank you number three uh how did the indians get a smooth straight shaft on their arrow do you happen to remember that they hung them down with rocks how did they get a smooth uh kitty number three what is a vixen vixen is a female wolf Fuck. Number, Excuse me. <laughs> number one what is the difference between a bobcat and a mountain lion they're both in the cat family. A bobcat is a smaller animal. Smaller type animal. Smaller type. Uh, how far can an arrow fly, number two? Well, it all depends on the size of the bow, but they can carry, I mean, if you shoot at about 45 degree angle, they can carry almost half a mile. Number three, what are your arrows made out of? My arrows made out of wood. <laughs> are your arrows made out of wood, number two? Yes, ma'am. What kind of a shaft does it have? It, it's a cedar shaft. Unless you're shooting in competition, then you use a duraluminum shaft usually. Number one, do you have feathers on your arrows? Yes. Where? At, uh, Ralph? Uh, number one, what are the dimensions of a bow? It varies. Usually they're around five feet long. And what are the, the dimensions of an arrow that go with a five foot? About 28 inches. Um, uh, number two, what's the distance to the target in championship uh, archery? It, uh, it varies. It, uh, you, you have 30... 40 and 50 yards. Uh, number three, um, um, how old are you? I'm 20. And number one, how old are you? 17. And number two, how old are you? 19. And uh, there we have it. Those the final medical statistics questions. of vital nature, we have time to vote once again. Yeah. And once again, without consultation, will you mark your ballot? If you do so, you will select, be selecting, of course, number one, number two, or number three. Everybody's set in a hurry this time. Okay, Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I voted for number one. I don't know whether it is number one or not, but uh, he was certainly very straightforward and direct with his answers, as were all of the boys, but I thought it was number one. Kitty, in your opinion, I voted for one. number two because number one didn't know about Suey, and I believe that's hog calling, even in New York. And <laughs> number three said it was a female wolf, and it's a fox. So he, I voted for, well, he changed it, he of course, correctly. but I voted for number two. Ralph? Number two, I got hooked too. He seemed to have all the information. He sure did. And Vixen? I mean, Polly? <laughs> I voted for number two. I don't always have to have a read. <laughs> all right. If not, we will then proceed to find out how right or wrong we are as we run our statistics down and determine which of these gentlemen is the real champion varmint caller. So will the real Larry Eliason please stand up? That kind of threw you a little bit, didn't it, huh? Oh, it was a shock. Well, you hardly questioned him at all. You questioned the other two. Well, he moment. didn't know what Suey was. <laughs> I gave him up. Listen, right right Polly, anything you say, he thinks he's calling girl. Oh, I see. <laughs> I see. Well, you probably meant chop Suey, so it yeah. didn't really matter. 
Well, now let's find out about uh, a little something well, first. Two I want a be. sample from number one. Yeah. We're going to ask him, if you will, to do a little varmint calling for us. Don't anybody else stand up when this call goes out. <laughs> Would you please? The sound I will make will be the sound of a rabbit being killed by a larger animal, an injured rabbit. Can you oh, imagine a, a bunch of animals just waiting to hear that sound so they can come out and see what's going on? <laughs> they want to find I don't out what blame him for oh. killing them. Let's find out more here ourselves. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do, please? My name is David Rathjay, and I live on Governor's Island. And the next year, I'll, or this year, rather, I'll be going to the University of Illinois. Congratulations. Uh, that's right, boy. And number three, your real name and what you do, please? My name is Robert Wolfe. I'm an advertising copywriter for J. Wilder Thompson Company. <laughs> That's why he said wolf. <laughs> That's right, wolf. He said wolf, he said wolf instead of fox. <laughs> he just said his own name. Yeah. All right, check up on the score. We find that uh, you gentlemen did real well this time. Mm -hmm. You, future student at the University of Illinois, garnered three of the four possible votes. That's uh, three incorrect votes, therefore, for a total of $750 from Helene Curtis. And, of course, a gift package of all of their fine beauty products for your ladies. Thank you very much for being with us. Happy calling. Good night. Good luck. All right, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Fran Stryker. What is your name, please? My name is Fran Stryker. What is your name, please? My name is Fran Stryker. Follow along once again, panel, with your copy cards of this affidavit. I, Fran Stryker, am a writer for radio and television. I started my writing career in radio in 1930, and among my early assignments were Covered Wagon Days and Robin Hood. I helped in the creation of both the Green Hornet and Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. My major effort, however, was the creation of a character who has been a leading figure in network, radio, and television, and in comic strips for more than 25 years. I am the creator of The Lone Ranger. Signed, Fran Stryker. Three stalwart gentlemen this time, all who have contributed a great deal to all of our past, I'm sure. Fran Stryker, creator of The Lone Ranger. We start this round of questioning with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Thank you, bud. Number one, who played Robin Hood in the movie originally? Douglas Fairbanks. Number two, how long ahead are you in your strip? Uh, roughly uh, four months. Number three, what, do you, what kind of material do you draw in? I don't understand. Do you draw in ink, pencil, crayon? I don't draw at all. I write the script. Oh, you don't, you don't draw at all? Oh. Number one, when did Orson Welles play the Lone Ranger? What was that? When did Orson Welles play the Lone Ranger? He never played it. Number two, when did Tonto join the Lone Ranger? Uh, shortly after the uh, series began. How long ago was that? Uh, it was in uh, 1930. Uh, three. Ralph? Um, number one, where did the Lone Ranger originate? Where was the first show done? In Buffalo. Number two, would you give the same answer? Yes. Number three, would you? No, Pittsburgh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number one, who's in charge of programming at CBS? That I don't know. Do you, number two? No, I'm not, I'm not associated with the radio. All man. right. Uh, who directed, number three, who directed the uh, radio show of the Lone Ranger originally? Originally, it was handled by George Trindle. Uh, number one, um, who played Sergeant Preston originally? A man by the name of Sutton. Paul Sutton. Polly? Number two, what was the name of the Oriental houseboy in the Green Hornet? Kato. Uh, number three, what was the name of the, of, of the, uh, um, the Green Hornet in the Green Hornet? You mean his name? Brett Reed. Yes. 
Uh, number one, first of all, uh, may I just say that the Lone Ranger is like a, a part, I think, of everybody's lives. It's, uh, it's, I've known it since I was born. It's a, it was a great, great uh, character that you created. Number three, how long has the Lone Ranger ever been unmasked? In the Never unmasked. Never unmasked. Never. Tom? I know a great story about the Lone Ranger. He was surrounded on all sides by, by warring Indian tribes. And he turned to Tonto and says, What are we going to do now, Tonto? And Tonto says, What do you mean, we, pale face? <laughs> but I would like to know... <laughs> I would like to know, number three, what is the background in American history for the Lone Ranger? Uh, actually, it was, uh, the background was based on six Texas Rangers, of which uh, uh, it, was, it was thought all six of them were killed. But in reality, Tonto saved one and dragged him to his cave and brought him to life. And then he was known as the Lone Ranger, wore the mask so he wouldn't be recognized by his enemies. Hey, that's all we have. Fascinating, too. I wish I could have heard more of it myself. I might have started going out buying up back copies, but it's time to vote. So, panel, if you will please take your silver bullets and mark your ballots. Voting for number one, number two, or number three. Well, uh... Tom, for whom did you vote this time? I guess we could all really, if he were terribly, terribly clever, he really nailed us all this time. But if number three were not the right man, and I, if it weren't, I thought it would have to be number one, but number three would never go against what number one said if he were the right man. Does that make sense so far? No. So I think I had a vote for number three when he said uh, a town work. different from number one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kitty? I voted for number three for quite different reasons. When Polly was saying how much the Lone Ranger is part of all of our lives and my children, Number three smiled the broadest and seemed the most pleased. <laughs> ah, the audience agrees with you. Let's see if the rest do. Ralph? Uh, number three. I was with number one until that last answer. Actually, too, I thought um, uh, that the, the show uh, Lone Ranger originated in Detroit. None of them gave that answer. Yeah, I so. did, too. That's funny. <laughs> Polly? I'm... I voted for number three, too. Uh, we were all wrong last time, but uh, whichever one it is, I, I think it's wonderful. All righty, there we go now. Let's find out. I'm sure we're all anxious to know which one of these gentlemen is the one who created that part of our past, the Lone Ranger, and part of our present, too. So will the real Fran Stryker please stand up? Ah, <laughs> But where it did originate, I always thought it was Detroit. I did, too. Oh, where, where it did originate? Where it first you said, was You said Buffalo. In Buffalo. In Buffalo. I thought it was Detroit, too. It's funny. I, it I was so brilliant of number three it to go fantastic. against everyone else in the city. Because it made, we all were, I think, after talking, have, we were all for number one. Yeah. I have one question I'm amazed that none of you asked. in Buffalo for a few weeks before it went to Detroit. Uh -huh. I'd like to ask one question I'm, I'm amazed that none of them asked. What does Kimo Sabi mean? Trusty Scout. Oh, there we are. <laughs> well, our trusty scouts, let's find out about the others. Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you really do? My name is Charles Day, and I am a sales engineer for Westinghouse Electric International Company. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and finally, he who deceives you the best, number three, your real name and what you really do. My name is John H. Harris, president, producer, vice capage, now at Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Well, in checking on our score, we find, of course, there were four incorrect votes at $250 each for a grand total of $1,000 from Helene Curtis and a gift package of all of Helene Curtis' fine beauty products for your ladies. Thank you so much, gentlemen. We had a lot of fun and hope you did. Good night and good luck. That's all the time we have for tonight, panel, except, Ralph, don't let you go without telling you that I certainly hope, as we all do, I'm sure I speak for all of us, Hope that Sunrise at Campobello, the picture, when it comes out, is a tremendous success. Thank you, no, Bud. No. Yeah, thank you. That's it. Good night, panel. Good, good night, night. night. Bud Collier saying good night from Helene Curtis and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. To Tell the Truth is a Mark Goodson, Bill Todman production in association with the CBS Television Network. show has
has been brought to you by Helene Curtis, makers of fine beauty products, creators of suave hairdressing and conditioner, and America's number one hair spray, Helene Curtis Spray Net. This is Roger Foster saying good night from To Tell the Truth. The preceding program was pre-recorded. <laughs>